So we're going to have a little look at the buffer question. Um, this question comes from Aston Basis 2. Um, I've just printed it out and put it on a format that will be easier to go through. Um, this is a sort of typical buffer application question. It says you have to prepare a buffer of 4.8. You have the following 0.1 molar solutions. Formic acid and sodium formate, they're one pair. Propanoic acid and sodium propanate, that's the second pair, and phosphoric acid and sodium dihydrogen phosphate is the third pair. It says which of those three solution pairs would you use to make your um, make your buffer? So what we should do is we should go to our appendix D in our textbook or just look them up wherever we can and find out what the KA is for this is. So for formic acid, the KA is 1.81. 9 is 10 to the negative 4. The KA for propanoic acid is 1.288 times 10 to the negative 5. And since uh, phosphoric acid is a triprotic acid, um, we're actually going to have to use KA1 because it's the first propanoic in all. That's, pro that's phosphoric acid. So only one of those H's is gone, so it's KA1. And that's 7. Point 586 times 10 to the -3. So we know that the pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka for each one of these. So when I complete that calculation, pKa for formic acid is 2.74. The pKa for propanoic acid is 4.89. And the pKa for the first on so the lower this number is, the more acidic the solution is. So the question wants us to pick the pair that's going to best get us a 4.8. So what we want is we want our pKa to be as close as possible to that. And for the best of, um, effectiveness, we want the pKa to be within one pH unit. So um, I think the closest would be the propanoic acid pair. And we want it to be close, and we want it to be within one pH unit to make an effective buffer, to increase that buffer capacity. So the second part of this question says, how many milliliters of each solution would you need to make approximately one liter of a buffer? So to do this question, um, we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Um, so to find that uh, pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So for our scenario, um, the desired pH for the last 4.8, so pKa is 4.8. Uh, we can actually take the amount of right, 4.886 plus the log of CH3, 3, CH2, COO, MA, CH3, CH3, COOH. So that pair. So we're going to just arrange, rearrange this and solve for the log of the ratio. So basically, we're just going to subtract 4.886 from both sides. And we're going to end up with, when we do that, negative 0.0861 is equal to the log. Um, remember that this is the base and that's the acid, just so I don't have to keep rewriting those formulas out. The log of the base over the acid. So I know that 10 to the negative 0 0.0861, if I raise each side to the 10 power, is going to become a 0 0.820, 0, which is equal to the ratio of base to acid.
So I know that whatever I do, the concentration of the base to the concentration of acid must meet the ratio of 0 0.820. So I'm going to need less base than acid, essentially. So we're asked to pick one liter of the buffer. Since we're making one liter, we want to let the variable y equal the volume of our base, which is C to the H5, C level of NA. Uh, it's the same arrangement of this, just a different form. And 1 minus y will be the volume of C2, H5, C L O H. So that's a pretty key concept here that we're just going to sub in the volumes because remember, just by adding the two volumes together, we're going to be diluting it. So um, it's not as easy as just picking the certain volumes that makes it work. You have to actually make sure that the sum of those volumes is going to satisfy um, the question. So we're just going to use this part of the question above. So I'm going to write it out at 0 0.820 is equal to the concentration of the base with the concentration of the acid. I mean, the concentration of the solutions that we're given is 0 0.1. So we have to hold the base part first. So 0 0.10 molar base times whatever volume, which we define as y. We're going to divide that by 1 liter. And on the bottom, we have the same idea, 0 0.10 molar times 1 minus y all divided by one liter. So basically this is just an expression where y is the volume, we don't know what it is, but we've you just used it um, in two different spots because we know that the sum of the volumes have to equal one liter. So it just allows us to have only one unknown in the, in the question. So when we work this all out, we end up with 0 0.10y over 0 0.10 minus 0 0.10 minus 0 0.10y. So remember that 0 0.820 is equal to this. So what I'm going to do is multiply this whole bottom by 0 0.820. And that's still going to equal this. I get down and I solve this 0 0.0820 0 equals 0.18202y. As we go through and solve this, um, just this math equation, trying to solve it for y simplified, I now have y on one side. So we divide both sides. Of course, that's going to cancel it out on that side. And I'm going to find that y equals 0 0.4506 liters, which is 451 milliliters. And that corresponds to the volume for my base. So y minus 1 must equal 549 milliliters. Because the sum of those two have to equal 1 liter with significant figures is I only have uh, two significant figures in my molarity for them, so I can't really report that to three. So the volume of CH3CH2COONA is 450 mils, and the volume of CH3CH2COOH is and that is how we uh, solve this problem. We now know how to pick which is the best pair for our buffer. We hopefully also now know how to figure out what volume of a known concentration of um, buffers that we, uh, sorry, of solutions we have, you can mix together and get the right pH 
as well as not exceeding the um, volume restraint. Hope this helps.